Not all things are as they appear. This is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. That is a picture of me and my husband. Right at the beginning of our marriage. Now what I want to share with you is when you look at the two, they're sitting there having a wonderful time together and they're talking, they're laughing. But what you don't realize is the man in the shades that I'm talking to, who was my husband, was not trying to look cool. He was blind. So if you were to walk in the room and you were looking for a chair and you didn't say anything, and you're wondering why doesn't this gentleman get up and let you have a seat? It would be because he can't see that you're even there. He may hear movement, but movement doesn't tell him if you're male or female unless he hears you walking in heels. So this is my point. There are a lot of times you go through relationships with people. You expect them to deliver, don't you? And you wonder why they're not delivering. Why are they falling so short? Is it that they really don't care? Is it that they are so self-centered that they don't even have the capacity to be considerate toward you? Maybe it's the fact that that they think they're all that and a bag of chips and you shouldn't be wasting your time with them anyway well before you start sizing people up and sizing them down if you can't ask anybody who knows that person ask God you might be quite surprised that what you thought you were looking at is not that at all. What you thought they were acting like is not that at all. So this is just my little quickie lesson. That's just a little quickie. Don't judge a book by its cover. Open it up and look inside just a little bit. You might be surprised. You might open the book, find out it's not even a book, but it's a little bank with a bunch of money piled up inside of it, no pages. Don't be so quick. You know, I saw something on Facebook. I thought this was a perfect human study of greed and preconceived notions that we tend to be jealous of as a human race. This guy walks up to a female and he asked her, this was an Asian guy with his little punk rock type haircut, and he had like a t-shirt and some holy jeans, and I don't mean holy, holy jeans. And he's wearing these, these rusty looking sneakers, and he comes up and he says, hi, how you doing? He strikes up a little casual conversation, and after they talk a few minutes, he asks if he could have the lady's phone number. He'd like to give her a call, maybe take her out. <laughs> I mean, you should have seen her face. She was like, I know you're not talking to me. <laughs> I mean, the attitude was just a sudden switch. And, uh, you know, thank you, but no thank you. You know, don't call me and I won't call you. Well, he walks away. He puts on, a, he puts on, let me see, I'm trying to think of what he did. No, he didn't change his clothes. His driver, these are all actors now. His driver pulls up in the long stretch limousine and says, uh, sir, uh, blah, 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 what time do you want me to take you to the, he names one of the most expensive restaurants that people even know about. And the guy says, uh, just a minute, let me finish on my, you know, he's on his cell phone doing his thing. And the, the lady's looking. You know, sorry, she's looking, and she's like, she looks at him, she looks at, and then she whispers, she gets over to the driver, it's 
Are you driving? Are you talking to him? Oh, yeah, you don't know who he is, do you? Oh, man, he... Really? Oh, he just asked me out. Uh, I think I better go over. And he said, yeah, go and talk to him. So she tips her little... She starts switching her little hips over. And, uh, hi, um, I was the one you were talking to on the bench? And he was like, oh, yeah. He's back in his phone doing his thing. Um... I, I, I wrote my phone number down if you still want it. And he said, now you want my phone number. You didn't want it before when you thought I was walking. But now you want my phone number now that you see what I got backing me up. Never mind. I don't want a money grubbing. Cheap little woman that's trying to find herself a sugar daddy. You're not the one, and I ain't him. Bye. She, he said it in his own way. You know, I had to put my slant on it. What can I say? Pat's two cents and all. <clears throat> anyway, I thought that was so right on. Because some people don't know what they're missing out on. Do you know some of the people that I, whose hair I used to do? They were asking me, you're dating a blind man? I mean, he's like 100% blind? Yeah. Uh, does he know what you look like? Do you, I mean, have, have you guys, oh, we knew each other for years. We went to church before he lost his sight. Well, but he can't see you. Are you going to be able to handle that? Girl, that's all man right there. He can handle it. And if he can handle it, I can handle it. He's more man blind than all the men put together that I ever had with their eyesight. They couldn't see it. They saw the white cane. And they were freaking in their minds. What is Pat thinking? <laughs> My husband was the best husband I could have asked for. Do you hear what I'm saying? Beautiful heart, considerate, thoughtful kind. He was very kind. He had this gruff front, very bold and bodacious. He was just Mr. Softy. I used to call him Mr. Softy all the time because I loved his tender heart. He knew I meant it jokingly, but as a compliment to his sweetness. Now, I would rather have him, one of him, than ten suave, sophisticated, me, myself, and I, poop butts who think they're all that in a bag of chips, and they drive a fancy car with a few bucks in their pocket. I'd much rather have the man I had. Now, you can judge people by their front all you want. You could look at them and say, yes, no, maybe, nah. You know, you could go through that all you want. But be careful that you're not passing up the gift of a lifetime. If it doesn't come in the package you think you deserve. Because God may just give you the package you think you deserve. And when you wake up every other day with a black guy and a broken rib and, and, a, and a raped behind and, a, and, and money taken and, and, and dignity forsaken, I mean, you will curse the day that you got what you thought you deserved. Because God may look at you and say, oh, I gave you what you deserve. I tried to give you something that you needed, but you thought you were too good. Don't make that mistake. Pray before you stray, baby. Because once you stray away, that blessing may not be there when you come back around a second time like that young lady. Whoops.